some people may call game of the day. We got Astralis up against G2 for our next best of three. Now for clarifying, of course, both these teams have already made the playoffs. The loser of this is going to be going through to the quarters, the winner to the semis. But that is still a pretty good, uh, pretty good matchup, right? You get to the semifinals, you get top four finish guaranteed. You can win the entire event by only having to play a best of three and a best of five. It's a, it's a pretty safe position to be in. So I'm sure Astralis want to take that away, as yeah. they should here. But G2 have been on a bit of a tear. They have looked surprisingly good, right? Coming yeah. to this event, you imagine... Uh, well, you, you remember how they did, I think it was like ECS, right? They, they, mm. they fell pretty flat and everyone was like, no, well, that's it. First you know, event, though. Exactly, yeah. right? But that's what I mean. Everyone was very quick to judge. And then it's like, then existence did that whole interview where he's like, I want to be at our peak in like, I think it was two years, yep. uh, which is mental. There was the whole FNS meme in back. Like, I wasn't even given two weeks. I was like, nice <laughs> one, dude. I love it. Yeah, spicy. Um, but then, uh, you know, G2, they've, they've, they've surprised me. They've, they've looked so good, this event. Mm. Especially Smiths. Oh, my God. What a 180 we've done what? in 2018. It's like Smiths yeah. is back and just fragging like he's mental. Counter and moves. instead, it's like, you know, yeah, the ultimate counter meme. But now it's like everyone wants Skadoodle's head. But what? it's like, yeah, you know, right? it's just like, just change your target. What was the stat? I, 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 it's one of two. In the game versus Na'Vi where G2 won 16-14, Smiths top fragged. He was either 9-2 and two or 11-2 and two in... Jules versus Simple versus the best player in the world, uh, uh, an ex coach yeah. who hasn't played in the Everyone's pro scene calling for him two the years. Simple counter, the or, simple counter. Yeah. It might be it. Maybe it's Astralis counter here. That's the thing. Going into this game, I think everyone is going kind of looking at this and going, Astralis should win this game. No, hundred percent. And, and if they don't, I think a lot of people would be surprised. But. I still think there's a good chance G2 could give them a run for their money. Maybe not yeah. get a victory here, so, but all they need is a, a you know map maybe, and that'd be really really impressive I mean, for G2. You kind of think right. So Astralis undisputed, you know, like best team in the world right now. We have the vetoes coming through, but I'll stay on this point just for the yeah. timing. Undisputed best team in the world. You look at their route though throughout this competition so far. It's like you beat Ents. They they're doing really well, the but Navi still right you know like quite quite unknown. Uh, we'll, we'll address these any second, but. Uh, and then they go on to beat Cloud9, who, as we saw the other day, not doing that great. Yeah. Oh, boom, you know, now they're suddenly in the upper bracket position. They're all done. So now like, I think G2 are going to be like a great actual test to see, you know, where G2 stack up, where Astralis stack Because on the right. flip side, G2 have played both Na'Vi, who have won their last two events, and also Mouse Sports taking yeah. a 2-1 victory there, who have looked pretty good recently, although they fell to ends. But yeah, let's talk about this veto. I Dust like this. 2 pick for G2, Nuke pick for Astralis, overpass final map. That is the best veto I think we could have possibly had. Yeah, I mean, the, the scary thing is, right, for G2 is like Astralis getting that nuke pick yeah. in there. I, I think the, the issue G2 are going to have matching up against Astralis is Astralis' map pool is just so deep. Every map. Yeah, and, it, and it's like they're so good at every map because they're Astralis. And there's, there's just, you know, you don't want to face them on train if you're G2 because I guess, that, you know, they're not too prepared on it. But also Astralis are very, very good on it. And, uh, you know, their map pool is going to be a, a lot narrower as a result of just coming together. So I think, you know, you're already kind of facing a losing battle there. But all things considered, these aren't terrible maps. Uh, for, for, for G2, right? One and thing I, I think... Yeah, like in addition, I think Overpass is a key talking point as well because when we saw Existence back on LDLC calling, they really liked Overpass. Like Existence was really good at calling on the map and he was always able to put up a really good individual performance. I think back to every game where Existence like fragged well in LDLC and I think of Overpass. So... In some sense, if we get to a third map, there's definitely a chance that you know G2 are going to be a little bit prepared on that. But again, we don't really know yeah. this team's map. That's what right I was going to say. You can almost maybe see the thought process from Astralis. Not only are they trying to play to their strengths, which is every map, but yeah. it's like they're trying to take out the ones that are, are more puggy, where, where everyone knows it enough that you can just like call like kind of defaults on the fly. And you can see, you know, they've taken out both Cash and Inferno once uh, G2 got rid of Mirage and Train. So you're kind of left with the more like diverse ones, like Nuke, very good map for Astralis. I doubt G to have practiced Nuke very much. A lot of teams just yeah. try to have that as their ban. Uh, and, and then, you know, Overpass, I agree with you. That's going to be interesting. And I hope we get there. Yeah, only That's the one issue, right? O only problem is, if you think of Astralis <laughs> and Overpass, like they're one of the best Overpass Definitely. teams and have been in the past yeah. the best Overpass team in the world. So, yeah, I, like, again, I think Matt Paul aside, this is such a difficult game for G2. Astralis are at their peak right like, now. I've been undoing more and more Ooh. buttons of the show. Yeah, Ooh, careful. You guys even come back and just shirtless. It's you, like, you hey, just, he, you're, well, what well, you've been doing off camera is just, like, stretching. It's just ripping buttons yeah, left and right. Like, uh, like the Hulk. Yeah. But, but without the same physical strength. Or the anger, I hope. Please don't kill uh, me on yeah. the desk. <laughs> I'll make no promises. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, yeah. I'm not just going to like choke slam you out or something like that. But, That'd uh, be appreciated. <laughs> no, I, I'm so excited just to see where G2 stack up, especially because like the expectations for a lot of people coming here w uh, of them was like, 
oh, Smith used to be a coach. There's no way he's going to do well. That's the most surprising yeah. thing. Like Smith has been like, you know, the star of this team. And it's like, what is happening? It's 2018. Smith's is wrecking everyone. Existence, not putting up crazy numbers, but his calling's been fantastic. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then I, I think when you actually kind of compare how, the, how these guys are going to stack up, right? Astralis, like I say, undisputed best team in the world right now. But G2... Unknown skill ceiling. We haven't seen a lot of them. And then when you compare the players head to head, Device versus Kenny S, that's an interesting duel. They stack up quite nicely. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, it's like Glaive, uh, Glaive versus Existence. It's like, you know, that they also stack up quite nicely once mm -hmm. again. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm interested to see uh, to see how this one pans out. For, for me as well in this game, like, even if G2 just get bodied and get wrecked and they don't even win a map i'm not even going to be too worried because again they've already proven themselves this event they beat navi they beat mouse sports and all with a new roster as well we're, we're meant to give this team time and we haven't even needed to give them that because they've already found themselves in the playoff so far but let's find out how they stack up against the best team undisputed in the world astralis the danish overlords as well, we head into g2's map pick on dust 2 i'll tell you what's the one scary thing if if they just body g2 which oh. is funny because of the pun and the fact that Body just picked up the opening kill. But if they do, I, I, I'll, I'll save this. Hang on, right. Well, we're going to focus on the pistol because it's very important. G2, they found themselves the opener down here in mid. And actually, Smith's going to go ahead and drop Glaive. There he is. There is your boy. Damage darting through the smoke. And it's going to be Magisk and oh. Dupree inside of this beat bomb sign. Dupree, he's so damn good. Finds two on the back of the pistol. Zipnik's going to re remove the last. And Dupree, a quick triple. It was looking great for G2 and Astralis turn it all on its uh, head. That's the Astralis effect right there, Harry. What that's, were you going to say? Yeah, well, so one thing I was going to is if they just body G2, I think it's going to reach a point where it's like Astralis are so far ahead of the next best team that it might even get boring. It's like <laughs> Astralis play versus anyone. It's, oh, well, here's a game where it's just going to take 25 minutes. Well, well, then, do they turn into the 2015 Fnatic? Is that my question, right? Because Fnatic, back yeah, in the day, well, they, they were that's the thing undisputed I love. for so long. are helping us a lot, at least when it comes to making games more exciting, because we can pin them as, like, this titan, this giant, you know? I don't mean, like, the team titan. I mean, like, you know, like, yeah, like, this... This, this actual like behemoth that everyone has to try and defeat and no one can. But they're all so, so likable. That's my favorite part about this team. It's like you, you kind of had the old school like cocky JW, you know, accusations on Flusher back in the day. There, there was some definite like dislikes towards Fnatic back when they were doing a run. But I just don't think you can hate Astralis. They're yeah. all lovely human but beings. Also like Dupree is just yeah. so cheeky. Yeah. Like everything, at, like, but in like, in like a sweet way. You know? Like he's just like so charming. <laughs> Let, let's but, yeah, get into let, the second round. Let's, let's like, <laughs> quickly, uh, you know, unvaseline ourselves from inside of Astralis, <laughs> shall we? And we'll, we'll focus on the round at hand. Device, with a bit of famous play over here at long, has Glaive to back him up. They do lose body down in towards the B bomb site over on the side of G2. Smiths has a scout. They've entrusted him with that. Interesting not seeing Kenny be the one to possess it, but he's going to try and fare better with the Deeg. Uh, he doesn't. He does not fare any better with the deek. He goes down at the hands of Glaive. Smith, Ooh. he's fully blind, but he's clicking on heads left and right. Going to wish Device a swift good night. And now he looks to try and leave long, although he's going to double back round and maybe he can get a bit more done with the scout. Glaive will finish him. It's existence 1v4. Pretty low likelihood of much more happening in this round other than him dying. Ooh, that was close. Smoke shots coming through. Glaze about to get rid of him, but Existence had found that scout and done a bit of damage. Unfortunately, it will go nowhere. Astralis take that 2-0 lead on the map pick of G2. Starting things off strong, keeping a lot of rifles intact as well. All four purchased rifles will be held forward into this third round. And this is a chance where Device can just play a USP if he wants, because realistically, G2 are not going to have anything behind this buy, or lack of buy. They've just got pistols, a couple of investments in the form of a Deagle, so a single investment, that's not two. And device actually even going to be thrown over the FAMAS and an M4 bought up. So Astralis not looking to pull in that orb too early, unless maybe they take a casualty here. But they actually won't have enough money. So not really a huge problem just yet. Kenny may have an orb coming up soon, but Astralis certainly going to be comfortable with rifles nonetheless. And now we head into a round where G2 really are just looking to burn out utility. If they can waste some time, force Astralis to throw out these incendiaries and smokes that will have to be re-bought. And that's a success for G2, because right now we're not expecting really any more than that. Kills are going to be a bit optimistic on a map like this, unless you go for a potential B rush, but even them, 
Majiska's on the back of the site with an M4, and he's going to be able to take down that Deeg of Shock. So one of the two bought-up pistols has been removed, but it can be retrieved from body. An avid Deagler himself, I would say. Although, it's not like Australis are going to give G2 a lot of room in this round to really find anything. Yeah, but you were really expecting that heading into this round. Ooh. A couple of uncharacteristic misses there from Matt. Uh, Zipnik's able to ward short, but he still finds the frag. And this is going to be the end of this round as they mop up everyone in GT, but now the buy comes in. And uh, there is going to be the money for Kenny to go for that orb, but it is going to be Glass Cannon. So that is going to cause them a few problems, perhaps. Over on the side of Astralis, no orb board up. Device is the cash, but they're going to attempt to go for the bonus round. And something that everyone commends Astralis for is this utility usage. There's a pause called in right now, so probably going to be a technical, given that there's no timer on our screens. Going to try and get that resolved ASAP. One of the things that everyone does commend Astralis for, sorry, is their utility usage. They were kind of the yeah. team that revitalized the frag grenade over on the old CT side. Uh, but they, they've done more than that. I think they've really upped the whole meta game uh, of CS, I'll be honest. It felt like for a while teams had started to plateau out, maybe even the kind of standard we were used to seeing started to drop a bit. But uh, with how things are going right now, Astralis, they're, they're ahead of the curve. Another team ahead of the curve right now is Entz, looking to be a bit of an improving roster since forming a couple of months back. They're currently playing off Na'Vi in the mainstream, for those who aren't aware, and it's 9-8 to Na'Vi on Entz's map pick of Dust2, so a very close game where Alu is actually sitting top of the board and actually top of the server alongside Simple with 17 kills. So, Sergei is second place in the server with 12. The young gun and the... I oh, don't want to say old dog, because that almost sounds offensive, but the very experienced, tenured player of Arlu, performing well. But we're back into this one. We'll keep you guys updated with all the mainstream games so you don't have to go out of your way to check. You can just stick here and essentially watch two games at once. Not really. But the AWP is up for Kenny. No armor on that one. And again, as we said, Astralis didn't lose a man in that previous round, so there's going to be no AWP coming through just yet. If anything, Astralis are hoping to win this round and get a free up off the back of this sniper. And now fast into middle is going to be Existence going speedily through the smoke. But it's Dupree on the other side that can't hold the mantle. Existence getting the kill and the CT spawn smoke doubt means Magisk has to step up. Missed flashbang means Magisk gets one. But does he realize the tunnel split is coming in as well? It's Majisk, he surely does. He's so good at these sorts of positions, fending on his own, apart from the rest of the team, and trying to buy time. One minute, 20 seconds left on that clock, and he's going to find existence, oh. but the trade's there from body. Now Shock's waiting over here in mid, checked by Device. Trade's there. Bomb's still yet to go down. That's going to be Kenny trying to plant it. He has the bomb in the... Uh-oh. Body catches off Glaive, rotating round. Zipnik's left in a 1v2. And Kenny missed shot there with the AWP, the lack of armor. The aim punch all going to play into this. Zipnik's with the tension spread between both of these players. Peek out from Body, and Body's going to connect the shot. Three kills for him, the hat trick for that man on your screen right now. G2, they find themselves their first round. And right now, one of the big questions for me of this roster is, is who are going to be the stars? Because when you would look at this maybe a couple of years ago, you'd go Kenny, Shocks, for sure. But to be honest, Body's been having some great games. Smith's been putting up numbers as we've already talked. And of course, it's not like Kenny and Shocks can't step up, but I hope to see a lot of firepower on this roster in the future. And they're definitely starting to show that now. Body kicking things off with a great first buy round. Yeah, that's something you kind of say, right? It's like there was that time in, in G2 where it felt like Body was the best player in the yeah. team for like for like a brief period, but it was definitely there. And, and since, you know, this team's come around, he looks a bit revitalized. It looks, it looks like maybe he's trying to go back to that old form that we saw him have. Uh, another, another technical pause called on in, but this gives us some time to take a look at what Astralis' purchasing options are. I think I saw two orbs floating around there. One of those going to be going over to Device, and the other going to be on the back of Zipnix. And G2... They've, of course, got the AWP on Kenny. Now he has armor to go behind it. And uh, take a look at where he's spawning. He, he doesn't really have a very good spawn for anywhere. I guess that would be, you know, closest to B, but it's still not really great to justify going for, like, an early, pe uh, an early peak there. So, uh, but I mean, with this many players over along, Smith, that's a bit of a dream for him. He can go try and take the fight along. Dust2, very spawn-based map. 
And as well as that, this new Dust 2 has, I don't know whether per, uh, purposeful or not, it actually means it's way easier for T's to get out of long before CT's can even hit the corner. Typically, in old Dust 2, it was equal, right? Even the best spawns, you would both line up together and reach at the same millisecond. Now, T's can actually get there a little bit faster, especially with this good spawn from Smith. So I'm sure Astralis are aware of that. They have been um, you know, frequently playing this map as well, so it's not like it's uh, unknown territory to them. But... For now, Smith is certainly going to get his opener towards long. And the question is, how do Astralis fight back against that, right? Do they give up long? Do they play a passive sight with the AWP? Do they try and fight back with utility, throwing in smokes on the corner and flashing their way into pit? There's plenty of options here for Astralis, and they've got a, you know, a lot of depth on the CT side. So I'll be excited to see how they approach this round. Of course, they don't know the spawns of G2 as well, though, so that does definitely affect things. Yeah, that's always going to play into it. I'm trying to, like, see, this is the issue, right? The map, when it's, uh, I'm trying to, I think that's Zitnix with the spawn for long. That's probably why yeah, they've thrown him the orb. Yeah. I don't have my glasses on, so that doesn't help. I but, uh, you. cheers, thank you. You're my, you're my eyes, and that's pretty much it. But <laughs> I, I got the rest. I'll take that. That's a pretty, pretty key sense. But, yeah, Astralis, they've, they've been. I mean, you know, the whole thing to the stars, they're certainly there right now. My goodness, undisputed best team in the world. And uh, I'm excited for this one because I would say this is their, one of their first real challenges, at least on who we've seen G2 stack up against in yeah. comparison to Cloud9. See, you can make that argument. It's like their first real challenge. But then again, you can also say it's, it's not a challenge in the sense of not to say the G2 aren't a good team, but, you know, like expectations of G2 coming into this event were not that high, I don't think. At least not for myself. Like I didn't expect them to beat Mouse Sports and Na'Vi and then, you know, fight up against Australis. That was not the route I assumed G2 would go through. I assumed this would be a lower bracket, you know, brawl. Because, again, this is such a new roster and they haven't had many uh, lands to compete, or more than one. So, yeah, you know... I feel like this is a great example to see how these two teams match up. Because I, I, I'm not going to even make any assumptions on, like, okay, this team is definitely yeah, going to win this. We, we, don't, we don't know where we place G2 right now. We know they're sick. They beat Mouseport 2-1. But how sick is the question. And again, Mouseport's also lost to Ents. It's so hard to tell when you have an event like this. Because you see Ents beat Mouseport. You see G2 beat Mouseport. Now, is that Mouseport on the performing? Is it them playing yeah, right, well? Exactly. Like, it's a, co it's a combination of both. It's so hard to put teams, uh, you know, on a, on a certain level. So I think this is a great example. Yeah, especially with the sort of like stand-in problems. Uh, the, yeah. Uh, like the weird... Roster changes. So many four-man rosters yeah. like existing out there and it's like, what is happening? You know, Smiths is back in the server. It's 2018. Everything, you know, cats and dogs living together. That's what Trace always says. Just pandemonium. But the question still remains. Will G2 rise to the stars or will Astralis continue to Denmark their territory here oh. as we prepare to head back into Dust 2? Slight technical uh, hitch, but it should be over shortly. Hugo, you have a tough time. this water bottle, getting, Harry. It's, it's too, all good. No, I got, got it. I'm a man. Oh, I'm I wanted, a man. I wanted to do it, it just to upset you. But. No, that would have been really upset. I feel like, you know, I can't open my jar and I pass it to my husband, Harry. We've got our adopted kid on the way, apparently. Wow, yeah. We're, we're <laughs> you know, for anyone who's just joined, You're that's, the one a, that made that's that a very yeah, old yeah, yeah. meme from, uh, from a game earlier today. Yeah, you made that joke. But, just wait. Let's go to try and get some more information as to what exactly is going on so we can keep you folks at home informed. Sadly, we are not in Cologne. We can't get up and go to the stage. Ah, okay, so we're replacing Glaive's PC. That's why he hasn't bought. So we'll be waiting for that to get sorted out. Glaive, to jump back on a computer. That's always nice, you know. It, it's helpful to have a computer in your CS matches, I would say. Yeah, I mean, all, uh, you know, we learned that just last night when we were trying to play a game. Yeah, yeah. Internet, yeah actually, and your, your PC out. crashed. That was lovely. Yeah, nice. that was always good. We still drew the game. I won a 1v4 pistol clutch, so. Now, he's basically... Uh, Get me on the server. Basically Nico at this point. Don't know why I chose him. I Could we with Dennis? Yeah. Pistols. I mean, I always said Carrigan. It's like, is he really like... I mean, like I said, Rain is a good pistol. But anyway, it doesn't matter. This we, is irrelevant. Just, yeah, yeah. So, Hugo, we're back to us. We're back on the screen. And uh, we're just swapping out a PC for Glaive. What's yes. going on? Do you want to give us an A stream I, I, update? Yeah, I knew that's, that's what, what you're doing. about to do. 139 to Navi. They switched over to the CT side of Dust 2. They've had a very nice half so far. It was Ents taking pistol, Navi reset, Ents carried on the force by war, then Navi won four in a row. And it is looking like maybe a fifth because Ents are on Eco or Force. So, yeah, right now, looking good for Navi. Again, that's a game that I'd love Ents to win because I really want to see them in the playoffs, but. 
if they lose to Na'Vi, it doesn't really matter. They still had a great run. You have such a good voice, like, set up for the uh, for the whole update thing. It's like, you know, on the radio and they give you, like, a Welcome. traffic update. Yeah. It's like, oh, traffic southbound on the M25. Build There's up a on lot the of M25. They don't sound like that. Yeah, no, no, like the... Oh, I'm not even going to try. No. No? You, you caught you me you out. Don't no, no, I'm you so got, sorry. I've, I've ruined the banner. I've lost my confidence. I've ruined the banner. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, just chip away at your fellow colleague. That's the best way to do it. Over years, build up that resentment. That's oh. the key to a happy work life, happy marriage. Just do it all. Anyway, Hugo, this is a positivity desk. So looking at what we've seen so far, have you seen anything that's impressed you from G2 in the one round that we've <laughs> seen them play with rifles on this map? Body's looking warmed up. He is, isn't Three he? Three kills. Yeah. Nice, uh, nice bit of team play as well. I think it was... Oh, not sure who it was in the site. Maybe Magisk. No, he was uh, the the clutcher. Who was the CD clutcher in the site? Doesn't matter. Yeah, but Magisk. <clears throat> yeah, no, because I. Oh, was it at the very yeah, end? Yeah, yeah, yeah I was going to say not Magisk because he died early on. Um, it was nice to see G two, you know, not playing puggy CS and trying to force an aim duel. Uh, Zipnix was trying to take a fight and G2 just weren't committing to a peak so and were just baiting each other, which was really nice to see. Because we so. just have like an unspecified amount of time. What I'll do is... No, we have is two minutes. We've just been told. We have two minutes. We've just been told. See, so I'll throw your eyes and, and your ears. ears. There wow, we go. Dude. Yeah, we're doing it all. So uh, I'll touch you my, later. my question... My, my question uh, to everyone <laughs> at home is just, you know, how can I get out of this situation? Who do I talk to now that I've been uh, harassed? Uh, no, so Hugo, here's what I was going to say to yeah. you. Uh, later on, MIBR versus Big. Yeah. Where do you see that going? Big. Big, 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 I'm committing to it. In the same way That's I say Ents is getting to playoffs, I'm not going to like, I'm not going to call Big to win all these games and go like, oh no, they'll lose that one. They're going to win. I called okay. it for Renegades. And I was you right Ents versus Na'Vi goes the way of Ents. I, you see, I'd love that. And I, I've called it, so I'm going to commit to it. But right now, it's not looking too That's good. That's such a cop out there, like... I've called it. I'm committed to it. But no, I think. Uh, well, okay. Well, what, what do you want me to say? Do Just I honestly? Do I honestly think Benz <laughs> is a better team than Navi? No, obviously okay, not. Right. But do they have great upset potential? Yes. If I was about to put money on it, would I put it on Ents? Probably not. But okay. I'm yeah, still leaning towards that's, that's, them because okay, I think that, there's upset good potential. Play. That's a good like, play. otherwise, every game you look at, if you don't, if you never go for an underdog, it's no fun because you're just going to go, oh, Navi are the better team, so they're going to win. Like that. Oh, great. That's boring. You know, I'm never being held to okay, these predictions. I can say what I want. Yeah, that's good enough. I mean, within reason. Yeah, no. Uh, well, you know, you know, we, all right, you, so you know when you're playing against CS and you're, yeah. and you're clutching, you're waiting for that bomb timer to tick down, and every second feels like an hour. <laughs> that's what it feels like right now. <laughs> but, but you'll be glad to know <laughs> we did it. We clutched it, and we're back into this G2 versus Astralis. Sit back in your seats because it's all underway now. Let's see. Astralis currently, a lot of people hold them. To the standard is the best team in the world. I think that's mutually agreed between everyone out there in existence right now. But uh, especially between their fellow Danes. In fact, we have two existences. <laughs> there we go. That's fantastic. Uh, on our screens, we do. Yeah, I'm sure I'll be reset in a second. That's fine. But double up up for Astralis. So device playing that A site up on short. Great position for it. You can easily get a pick and drop off, assuming the T's don't have that. T side mid control into the CT spawn and device gonna be pressured. Flash is good. He just falls straight off. He wants nothing to do to do with that. Fair enough. Back towards long he goes. With the second orb residing at the back of the B site. Look at this push up from Astralis. They want to take some control because this smoke thrown down from body. And control they shall take as Dupree holds the angle close by and G2 ready to rush on in. We have a Molotov on device. But none on this B site, only a smoke. So G2 likely just going to rush through that if they can find this opening kill. Dupree's going to be pressured with the mollies coming in. The flash bang through, but he still hits the shot. Second one on the no scope, and Majisk has dropped the bomb as well. This has been a complete wipe down for Astralis. Yeah, and I mean, look at the uh, position of, uh, of Glaive. That's who <laughs> it is, not Body, by the way. Uh, he's all the way back in CT sp uh, T spawn. And he could do so much damage to me. All the information he gets as well. He's going to spot these two players out that currently reside up and towards the top of tunnels. And, oh, no, Kenny. Oh, I feel so bad for you. Oh, he doesn't oh. know. He's got no idea. Oh, it's like watching a like, lamp. Oh, Kenny! Oh. Spidey senses start tingling. Existence is able to trade. Okay. And a second as well. Looking to try and lead by example. It's had a couple of flat games, but now... Want to try and step up. No time left. Able to hold him to the AK at the very least. No matter how much they pressure him. Still going to be a fourth round for Astralis. They're able to save that AK forward, though. Yes, again, to, to whoever's job this would be, we would really appreciate the HUD being reset here because this is going to be very confusing. We've got Body on Astralis' side and 
two existences. And I tell you what, now would be the perfect time to try something like that. There's a tactical pause called in for G2. Right now, we have the brain power of two existences coming together to forge this strat. So if we can, even, we can even pop back on camera, Harry. You've got your shirt back on. It's okay. Yeah, we're <laughs> I ready. got that back on, you know. Just in time. Um, yeah. I'm sure someone's. The thing I love is, right you know, obvi obviously, the thing I've never really considered. You've, you've had Smiths in this coaching role, right? Surely he's able to now assi assist existence in quite ah. a big way. Do they have uh, a coach on top of this? I'm not sure. I, I haven't actually really seen. But hmm. regardless, is it's like that's going to be quite helpful. The existence coming in, and admittedly, he's played with these guys before. He knows them all well. But you've got someone who's actively worked with the majority of the team here. You know, who can sit down and be like, okay, this is how it is. You know, like early early days. This is what we can do. That's always something fun. Existence carried that AK forward, everyone else just with pistols. A couple of Degas, a couple of flashbangs. Once again, I can assure you there's only one Existence. And there's only one AK carried forward here for G2. All about for Device. Is the coach, by the way. Who? Niak. Oh, okay. I might oh, be yeah, pronouncing yeah, yeah. that okay. wrong. Yeah. No, of course. Existence down short with this one scavenged AK. Going to get tagged up by Zipnix early on. But everyone else on eco here. Really not a lot to play with. You're relying heavily on existence to get an opening kill. So they can pick up some guns. Shocks has armor, so that's certainly something to work with here on the T side. But again, it's all down to this one rifle. Existence looking towards middle. Astralis ready, though. The flash goes in. Existence cannot peek off the back of it, but he decides to go forward anyway into his death. Zipnix hits that shot, and Dupree dropping Smiths in the meantime now puts it down to a three on five. The guns shuffled over to the man with the armor. That's Shoxy. Back towards the A site, he does look, but Device, he's on the other side of this site, so... This is not an easy fight to take if you're shocked. If Device commits to this angle, he'll maybe get pre-fired, but he moves back in and does take a shot. Falling off, another one found, and Shock's going to be dropping that AK. Kenny retrieving it off the body, but his teammate's gone, and he's alone. Yeah, this is uh, oh. feeling impossible for Kenny. The Danes swarm around him. They even managed to carry the AK forward. Device going to be throwing back his AWP. Dupree on the other. G2, they've uh, extinguished their funds for the time being. Once again, just because I feel like I have to stress it for those of you who are just joining us. Existence, for a start, you should realize there's two of them. There's only one. <laughs> and uh, that AK does not exist right now over on the side of G2. They will just have pistols. Oh. I was going to say, pretty ballsy for Body to try and look for the Deeg down mid onto Device and Dupree. The double orbs down there. Lots of Ds in one place. And Oh, speaking of this, a big D up towards top mid as Magist shuts down everyone here. Will be Astralis going to move up six to one. They're dismantling G2 and making it look easy right now. I just have this like feeling every time I watch Astralis play, it's just like it feels so undoable for whatever team they're playing against. I just feel sorry for it. I, I would not want to play versus Astralis. As much as I love this game, this will be the most aggravating match of CS for my uh, in my life. One team that I think could give them a run for their money, yeah, is Phase. Potentially, but. With Olaf, imagine if if he makes his return, you get a full five finally instead of Carrigan having to lead his know. band of misfits to four of them. I I don't know what's happening with this fifth player in phase, but I hope uh, whoever it is, I hope they hurry up and sort a roster. I wouldn't even mind if it was Croman or Olaf for that matter. I just want to know. I just want a fifth player like solid so phase can actually get real practice going. So we'll see. But for now. Shox is out long. Glaive is going to be flashed in from his teammate, and he looks for a pick. But that nade could land well to the dumpster. Does put a bit of damage onto Shox and continue flashing here. Astralis are really trying to force the issue, but Kenny is posted on the other side, and he'll land a shot. Won't double it, but Shox luckily there to finish off Glaive. And one by one, Astralis being picked to pieces in this buy round. Yeah, device falling back into the bomb site here with the AWP in hand. G2, they've left long. They're going to leave Smiths down in the pit. As they divert back towards B. Magisk has moved into mid with Dupree. They're going to try and boost up over the top of this smoke. Dupree, from atop his magic tower, does not spot anything down in mid. 
Be sure to keep your eye on Ooh. Body as well. He's aggressed all the way down long, and there we go. Device certainly has his eye on Body. He's dropped him from the server. Dupree and Magis now going to be tested as they look to hold down the B-bomb site. Oh. Dupree, a quick flick out to Shoxy. No trade back just yet. Dupree up in the window going to present a serious problem here for G2, but the utility is there to force him off the angle. They love a boost. Dupree once again. Doesn't find anything from it this time around. Three on three in the post plant. That was so in sync. All shuffling guns. Problem is, the site is so hard to retake at the best of times, but Astralis, they need to be the best here. Device has already been domed. And with that, Astralis have realized the bomb is ticked. The G2 players are surrounding the site, and the chance of winning this round is extremely minimal. So they have to give it away. A nice attempt, though, from the CT side, and they do have money to fall back on, so a buy will come through regardless. But that is G2 getting themselves on this T side once again, their second round. So trying to make waves up against Astralis here on their map pick. Again, if they want to win this series, Harry, I think they need to win this map. Nuke is coming up next. And that is no easy feat versus the likes of a Danish team. No, most definitely not. And uh, the buy going to be coming in for Astralis anyway. <gasps> yes, I was going to say, the heart is fixed. I saw nice. it flicker. Thank goodness. Because I was about to say... I love the way that the double existence strat with your massive brain is you've, you've <laughs> put a man behind enemy line's body. You know, they had to infiltrate. But Magisk, he's getting infiltrated by a bullet in through that wood. The penetration power of the orb worth its weight in gold. And now Smith's here to try and help Shoxy out along. <laughs> Team player, as always, goes ahead and saves him from the warm embrace of that Molotov. Things are still heating up at long, though, as Glaive finds himself down in the pit, emerges and rears his head only to find Shoxy's. That's going to be a two-man advantage now in favor of Astralis. So someone's going to have to step up here to claw them back into this round. And body down in mid along with Kenny and Smiths. Oh, it might have to be them. Dupree, almost a timing shot there, but flashed off the angle. Has to try and keep himself alive here. Bit of an awkward flashbang there. But G2 are playing slow, so there's an opportunity here. And he's got a bit of support from the B site as well. Magis can easily peek in and try and take the attention. But the flash works both ways. Everyone's blind here, Harry. No one can fire any shots off. Finally, the smoke will land because they didn't actually see Dupree, but that Molotov will give it all away. The jig is up. The Molotov down. So G2, they want nothing to do with middle. Instead, they'll group back up through short where Device sits on the car and lying in wait. G2 just can't make up their mind. Indecisive. And that's going to cost them. Dupree's locked them down. He's already posted up here in the CT spawn. And he's got the bomb as well. That's the second shot from Dupree. One man up's already crossed. But Dupree going to dive through. And that's the final pistol whip to win the round. Astralis 7-2 to two here on the CT side. Yeah, 13-2 for Dupree. Magisk is 9-1. and one. Everyone on Astralis just showing up in spades. And that's what we've been so used to. Even Glaive, this event, I was taking a look at his stats. He's been uh, putting up some very good numbers right now for Astralis. Over on the side of G2, it feels like really on dust. If, if you want to look to anyone to actually help you take a victory here versus Astralis, I, th I think you're going to need Kenny to step up. And right now, he's trailing behind. I think he's 1-8, and eight, if my memory holds correctly. Glaive going to get tested. and Oh! Oh, no. Padding those stats. He loves it. He loves the stat pad around. He certainly does. Going to find himself... Four kills there with uh, Zipex chiving in with one. G2, a slow start to this game. Both rounds they've had have been reset swiftly by Astralis. They need something here on the T side because this is starting to get out of control as we would expect. Even with G2 looking good so far this event, Astralis are always looking better. That is the rule of thumb. And Kenny does have a B spawn with this orb. Considering we've been seeing this secondary AWP from Dupree on B, he might just try and go and challenge this. But now it's only Magis there. Kenny is diving, but he can't hit the shot. He predicted the angle perfectly. That's a shame to see. But a boost up on short here for Astralis. Device is going to be locking down lower. And there's no one on short to actually stop this madness. They may have walked right past, but they're going to jump up and Device misses that shot. And he does so much damage on a Kenny, he cannot seem to catch a break. Well, they managed to get control of mid at the cost of some damage onto Smiths and Kenny. Only issue is right now, they've got one smoke 
One flash and a Molotov up on body. And even then they lose body at l over in towards B. Nick's going to take the peak as well over here at short. Aww. Just keeps taking the fights and they keep on giving him the frags. Smith's existence full. Kenny might even follow up in that Molotov. Indeed, he does. Shocks, what can you do? 1v5 and everyone from Astralis hunting you down. They don't want to let you get away with anything, buddy. And his time on this plane should come to an end soon. The players up on short don't elect to move just yet. Now I'm going to look to swoop in. Like Bolts just to a corpse. He's being surrounded. They're looking to try and pick the flesh from his very bones. Can we uh, please ring Lurpis's upset alarm? Ents have just won 16-14 versus Na'Vi. Well, I assume they have. It's a 5v1 right now with a bomb down. So Ents Who's have... Left? Uh, Flamey. Simple's the first to die. I was watching okay. that. Simple has 21 kills, top of his team. Alu has 32. Alu is destroying Simple right now. So a little fun fact for you guys over on the mainstream. Ents just took away Inferno. Oh, sorry, not Inferno. Dust from Na'Vi. Mirage being the second. And we saw Ents look very good at Mirage yesterday versus Maus. Taking that victory where Maus, I mean, again, a known Mirage team. So right now, there's some scary stuff going on here in Cologne. Astralis looking frightening as ever here, 9-2 up. And G2, pistols in their hands. Well, the French are known for their pistol play. I think this one is a little bit too much to ask for. Well, yeah, I mean, you look at it right now, they've struggled to do anything when they've had a full buy. So with a Deagle and a PT-50, you really don't think they're going to find too much success. Smith shot down in mid. The pre certainly does not do the same. Ooh. Okay, a couple of players getting by. They've even tagged up Smiths, weren't quite able to find him. Running the gauntlet down in mid just seems like a, a you know, a real awful time going down there up against Device and Dupree. And then it's out of the frying pan into the fire. You go running into Zipix down on the short angle and he uh, he will ruin your day. This is pretty unreal. 10 and 1 for Magis, 12 and 2 for Zipnik, 16 to 2 for Dupree. I feel like you'd have to be a bit of a savage person to enjoy watching a massacre like this. <laughs> Astralis, 10 and 2. G2 Same again. Same position you should keep your hands on the steering wheel as Astralis find themselves in the driver's seat right now. That's a good one. Existence fast out long, though. Can he have a good round? Because they've already flashed him off, and we've seen Astralis throw good utility to corner these players in Dumpster before. But again, Astralis, they're not even going to fight it. They've lost a couple of players on long before, so instead they just give it up and play from the site. And that means now they have this AWP posted. Body may have taken control towards the pit, thanks to the help of a smoke. Now, we're going to need something pretty incredible for G2, because right now, Astralis are running away with this first half. Ten rounds on the CT side of their opponent's map pick. So as the smoke goes down towards Xbox, allowing for the ability to split short, G2 don't realize the error of their ways. As Zipnik's here, and he's ready and waiting. Kenny spotted. Zipnix doesn't want to peek back into the orb, and now G2... Got a minute left. They're going to be begin to bring this bomb down. And with their long player loss, that split towards the A site has just been kind of nullified by this. Well, Zipnik's been so good at the short position, but this time Smith beats him. Existence even going to chime in with a frag as the two IGLs clash horns down on long. And it is going to be Existence to emerge victorious. Device holding the cross, but he's in a pretty quiet game, all things considered. Going to have to back away. Double up Device and Dupree in this retake. Less than ideal. But if anyone can make it work, it would be these two. Magis go all the way down at long. They do have kits. They have a smoke as well for the after plant. The bomb's going to be planted for Kenny down in pit. But as that frag comes in onto Magis, the decision to save comes through. G2 going to manage a third round against overwhelming odds. But uh, look at all the frags coming in at the end. People trying to leave the bomb site. Astralis will not let them. And when you look at the money over on the uh, side of the Danes, they are very rich. They've killed everyone. <laughs> this is a round that could only happen in, a, in an Astralis game. Dupree is $16,000. Zipnix is $16,000. Glaive is $15,000. Everyone is just rich. I feel like they could get that much richer as well. The Intel Grand Slam. These guys need two titles, if you recall, to win it. If Phase they, a one-off. Yeah, if they find a win here then uh, they get an extra $100,000 for denying phase. 
the. Uh, is that if phase in the grand finals as well? Yeah, or yeah. Well, or, or just yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I was planning ahead a bit. You know the. So yeah, I, I, I've, the future, I've revealed the story too early, guys. <clears throat> no, it's you're wrong. Ents are going to be in the grand final. I think you will find. At least they're one map away from being in the playoffs, and Astralis are only two from being in the semis. But this may not be too much longer unless G2 can get something going. A force buy up with three rifles and two pistols. Oh, missed shot from Dupree and Device a similar story, but it doesn't seem to matter. They don't even get punished for it. Two missed shots and some aggressive Astralis positioning, and it doesn't even matter. G2 cannot find those kills. Glaive's even pushed up into long doors as well, which allows for a heavier B setup. Two players here once again for Astralis, and that might be just the right call. Because G2 are fully set up outside this B site in the tunnel. Dupree gets off the back box, so he's not cornered has a position to retreat from but with a smoke down that's going to make things very difficult he has to go for blind shots and he can't see a thing there we go he's going to see something now flash over the top he avoids but he needs some shots and he just can't connect Majisk with two and the same story for G2 oh, that bomb has made it across into the B-bomb so it's Glaive with a flank that said Shocks is about to deliver a, a flank of his own who's works more oh no Ooh. Goodness, certainly now going to be Glaives almost. He's a little bit late. Existence has been allowed to post up and now does suspect the tunnel play, especially as that smoke goes out. Takes oh. the peak, wins the fight versus Zipnix. Now back in it with two on two. It's Smiths and Existence. Try and win this out. Time ticking down. Smiths from the car finds them both. Glaive and Device toppled by Smiths as he holds his own from the car position. G2 going to fight a fourth round. That's an easy for Smiths right there, but... Oh, I just saw an auto-sniper. That's on my disc. <laughs> Last round. Again, you have this, like, weird question mark on this team where currently, again, you know, we're four, four rounds up for G2, so don't look into it too deep. But the only two players who are do playing well right now are Smiths in existence, right? The IGL and the ex-coach. Kenny and Shock silent. And this is a bit of a surprise, but... G2 can't really catch too much of a break. A nice round from Smiths, but will it be enough to find them five here? That would be good on the T side, considering the level of team they're up against. That cannot be understated in this game. Astralis, a very heavy B setup here. They've got a passive mid. Dupree's tasked with watching that up from the doors. It, giving away the option for a mid to B split, but... G2 don't really realize just yet. So they pile their players up towards short. This could be a good call to make because right now Astralis are playing almost retake on A. Device is the only man committed and he's going to find himself one. His teammate on A, deep in long, where Shocks looks to split in the meantime. But an off angle from Zitnix might be exactly what he needs. Yeah, they have to be careful, Astralis. You're looking towards Device ready to try and hold the fort here. Rotation coming in from Dupree preemptively through CT to help out. Looking to try and line up a flash to help out Zitnix down in the pit. Haven't spotted anyone yet, but it's Shoxy coming in late that you want to keep an eye on. They've made it down into C tier, at least Body did for a moment before he goes down. Device Ooh. missed shot, but Dupree's there to finish things off. Kenny tries to run for the hills, but Device is going to find him. And now it's Shocks 4 HP and a dream. Last round of the half. Shocks is going to try all he can. <laughs> It's not meant to be, though, as Device cements an 11 to 4 half for Astralis on that, G2's map pick. That's just the team play of Glaive right there. Just jiggle peeks the corner four times and lets Device set up with their AWP to finish off the round. Glaive doesn't need the kills. He just wants the win. And that's what's important here for Astralis. They are looking to find it in G2's map pick. 11 to 4 up. And it is not looking to be too much of a task here for the Danes. Making things look easy as always. The buy-up of the pistol comes through. We've got a P250 on device with a slight bit of utility. Actually, the same buy of Glaive as well. And G2, they're going to be armed with a fairly default investment as well. Existence on a double flashbang with a kit. They play a passive long setup here for the CT side. And Astralis have just taken control instantly. Yeah, they're already out. And this is going to put G2 in a pretty tricky position. Now it's a very strong area to have. You can just whack a man down and pit, hide him away. Not really that great with the Glocks, so. Is that PT50 on device? That's the thing that can damage. Glaive has one as well. And 
I preferred because of the range over the Glock. And you can see the effect of just seeing a few players out long, what that's done. G2 have pulled four out of their five players over here towards the A-bomb site. Now rotating existence away. Ooh, Oddie's been tagged down to one HP. He's not looking too healthy all of a sudden. It's a slow burning round from Astralis. But if they can just keep tagging down G2 from range, they'll take that all day long. And this shouldn't be the team winning these duels because, again, they've only got Glocks and P250s. We have USPs on G2. These are far more favorable at range, even over P250s. And Body's showing us why. A kill coming through. Kenny S joins the party. And that's the bomb dropped in no man's land. And there are no men left up for Astralis. Two players intact, although Dupree drops one from short. The surprise is up and the round is over. It's Zipnix with 25 HP. He needs to at least die before the time is over. And he's just going to give it a, a balls to the wall push. It won't work out. Kenny S cleans it up. And G2, they've set themselves up for a good second half at the very least. They find Pistol. But they just need to be careful, Harry. They don't want to lose two Pistols in the second round. No, they most assuredly don't. The only issue is... Astralis have been very, very good whenever they force ball. I, sure, I saw that little statistic floating yeah. around. Didn't they have like a 75% win rate with force buys or something along those lines, which is just mental. So uh, let's see if that statistic gets boosted even more here. They force bought down what they can into this round. Magis going to go peeking in towards this B-bomb set where three players, well, two lie in wait with Kenny S keeping an eye on middle. Bomb going to be retrieved by Zipnix. They go ahead and smoke off CT. Now the pressure's on for Kenny. He's had a pretty weak game thus far. He has to try and hold back the tide of Danes down in mid. In fact, they turn away from it. They've lost Dupree inside of the B tunnels. Ooh. Kenny spots out Glaive, and that nade should be enough to slam dunk him down. But if not, doesn't matter. You've got shocks in the back. So this round's looking pretty clean right now from G2. There is, however, still time for things to go Ori. That's one, but that should be it here. Device is the only man left up with a scout, and he's just trying to creep into B. Element of surprise, this one. But G2 have cleared out the rest of the map. They should have an assumption he's somewhere around here. And there we go. There's the spot. Shocks cleans up. Nice couple of kills with the CZ there. 4K in that round, in fact. So Shocks trying to pull himself back into the driving seat in the second half. And looking at the odds there, I think that's about fair. Astralis with a, uh, a huge lead right now, so... 1.06, nothing too surprising. But for now, at least Australia is going to have to grit the teeth and take it, Harry. It's going to be just Glocks on this T side. Maybe a fast B play. Get this round over and done with. You don't want to waste too much time. Unless, of course, you want to play the long game and try and burn out this utility of G2. It can be a bit boring, but it can certainly come back to hurt the economy of the CT side. So nades being lost and kills being found. Kenny's finding three in the lower tunnels. Shock's trying to join with a full house. There's only one man left up in the spawn. Majisk running for the hills. One thing I am happy about, though, we're seeing, you know, Kenny start to find some confidence. Shocks yeah. as well kind of arriving now, and it's not going to be uh, so dependent on Smith's body and existence to get the damage done. I think they've both actually risen above them on the scoreboard. Especially shocks me. I mean, I, I, you know, if you think back a few years now, I mean, I have so many. One of my favorite ever Dust 2 clips is from shocks retaking the B bombs. So I think it might have been a like, Dreamhack winner 2014 or 2013. I can't recall. But uh, I always remember it because it was a clip casted by Semler. And he just did a fantastic job on that as well. 10 out of 10. But still, anyway, I have so many good memories of the point I'm trying to make. You know, nostalgia it runs right within this team when you look at it. And now they need to roll back the years, try and relive. Those glory days here versus the Danes. And they have closed the gap. 7 to 11. But now the buyers come in from Astralis. This is oh very my creative. God. Oh my goodness. Is he going to see him? Oh no, no buddy. That... You've just been 400 IQ'd, my friend. Glaive. That... Oh. From atop the shoulders of Zitnix. They've built greatness to the stars. Literally, they're yeah. going to get themselves there with that boost. Man advantage gain for Astralis. The Danes in the driving seat now. Kenny. Alone over on A. Does not matter. It's going to be Smith's tested inside of this B-bomb site with multiple players coming his way. Yeah, and he's already gone. Magis just going to delete him on the entry and Dupree can join the party. It's Shock's already cornered out of the site and this entire team are dead. So a hero play needed, but not going to happen. And that's a teammate from Astralis. Talk about team play. This is the roster for it. 12-7. 
G2. Money has been crushed on some of these players. We have shocks in existence to bail them out. The banks of the team. Going to be giving out a bit of a loan here to the rest of the roster. Kenny S given a WP. Certainly a good idea, considering he found a couple of kills in these last few anti-ecos. So maybe building some confidence. But he will be up against Device, who's now equipped with his own orb. And already finding tags down mid. Smith's in existence. Not getting out of there for free. The loan of the money comes at a cost. And that is some health. So G2 setting up very aggressive on long. Kenny and Body looking to challenge this one, but Astralis are on the other side. We do have this orb though, and Kenny not going to hit the shot. It's device too quick on the trigger, and Astralis taking the man advantage into this round. This time Body not going to get caught out by that same boost again, as he's uh, worked hard to retrieve the orb away from Kenny's. Deceased Body down at long. Shock's on a very wide angle. Not anymore. <laughs> He's very dead now. Body trying to hold the cross with the AWP. Not usually an AWP, but he can look to try and make it work. They've already made it by, though. And I think he's out of where. Quick flick up to Dupree. Still has Ooh. device to contend with, but Body's managed to quick double and turn this entire round on its head. Glaive going to keep on challenging. Body lusting for blood, hungry for more. Knows that the bomb's up here on short, but Glaive's managed to get away. The thing is, there's so little time left. Astralis need to make a decision. They were still guessing with the idea of pushing B if Majisca were to find that kill, but he gets picked up by Smiths. So now, everyone tagged on G2. Astralis got to take advantage of that on this A push, but both players are posted and ready on the site. Molotov's going to force Body out into the open, and that Molotov's going to burn him down to death. Zipnik's finding the kill. Existence here close below, but he's been now sent to the depths. Buried six feet under, and Smith's probably going to join him here, but the turnaround just flicks back for Zipnix, and he will win that round. So, Astralis still pulling themselves out of these awkward situations. Of course, G2 didn't have the most of health left on those three players, but feels like you can never count out this Danish roster. And as a result, Harry, the banks are poor. The money is gone. G2... They've got to hold an eco here and give Astralis a 14th round before they can even consider investing. I know the French like to force buy, but this would not be a good decision because, again, they're going to have enough loss bonus to buy up next round. It's such a tricky spot to be in, though, if you are G2. I mean, this is your map pick. Next up is Nuke, and I don't think, you know, I mean, I was going to say, I don't think the best Nuke teams could tangle with Astralis there, and it's like... Astralis are the best new team. Yeah, I was going to say, so, who is the best new you know, team? Yeah, that, that's, sort of, that's sort of the problem, right? Uh, for G2, this is kind of do or die. You're really relying on winning this and overpass if you're going to do it. I don't, I don't see a world in which Astralis win Dust 2, but, oh, look, G2, they've, they're have they sick at Nuke. I, I just don't see that happening, right? That, that's the one problem right now. So, uh, yeah, it's like, again, when you play a team like this, especially at their you know, potential peak of their performance, at least for the last year, Whatever map you end up on, you're still going to struggle. Even if it is your best map and their worst map, you're still going to struggle. And they're learning that the hard way. Already the B entries have come through. Two kills. And while there be a bit of a stack here for G2, it's a small consolation considering they're all USP'd up and pistoled down. The Glock is out and Majisk is playing deathmatch here. Astralis is going to take it nice and cleanly. Four players that are still alive at the end of the round. And now here's the buy from G2. The last ditch attempt to keep them in this map. Yeah, this is it. Do or die time for G2. The new the new squad recently assembled. Didn't have the best debut, but I don't think that's what they're going for, judging by the interview that Existence gave. And, I mean, you can really see the leaps and bounds these guys have made at improving since their debut back at ECS. So uh, let's not forget, they've already secured their spot in the playoffs, but the winner of this best of three manages to secure a spot in the semi-finals. Straight off the bat, Existence. They've assembled a... Uh, a tower down here in mid. Shocks manages that first frag, but now he's going to be relying on Body and Kenny up on short to do that much more damage. Body catches out Magis down in the depths of mid, and it's from the tunnels that Glaive strikes. The trade comes through. Three on four, still man advantage up in favor of G2, but we all know how proficient Astralis are. They're not out of this round just yet. 
G2 are looking to try and shut down a potential split towards this A site. In fact, they might have just raid, made the right call here. Glaive is going to tr be trying to split alone through long doors while the other two players push up short to A. Shocks repositioned down here. I think it'd be very difficult to expect this spot. If you are Glaive, and he won't. Shocks will take him down. Astralis left to two players again. Picked up a 2v3 to win their last buy round, but this one is going to be extremely difficult. Who's start? Not going to find the angle, though. And Kenny has hides in the site, waiting to hear footsteps before he strikes. That smoke might be good, but Kenny is better. Peaks before it pops, and he will pop device. Leaving just Sipnix alone. 1v4, 20 seconds left. This is a little bit too far-fetched. Well, Sipnix very good in a clutch, usually, but Kenny... Going to smite him down. And as you say, yeah, 1v4, maybe a bit much to ask of the, uh, of the man. Regardless, going to be the case that Astralis still with money to buy. They buy up here. Good thing for G2 there. They keep four players alive, which traditionally might mean they've kind of dodged that reset coming in. But the amount of utility they've had to rebuy, they didn't have kits as well. They've still had to put a healthy amount of money into this one round here. And uh, that's going to cause them a fair share of problems. They're not going to be able to dodge the reset. If they lose this, they're going to have no money into the next round, which comes with its own host of problems in Dupree. He's up past Body. How's this happened? Body's in a position to do damage. The pre falls at the hands of Kenny. And while Glaive pulls one back as best he can, still the man advantage currently resides over on the side of G2. Astrala slowing down the pace here. A good time to do so. Maybe G2 can be caught out in aggressive positions like that. Kenny trying to go for the peak. He's going to get shut down by Device, who's flashed into the pit, and Kenny did not expect that reposition. Shocks can't afford to do the same, because now this push is coming up to the A-bomb site. Molotov will force Shocks out of angles, and he's going to have to move into the open, trying to take the fight, and Device pinned down behind the car. He'll be caught in a head-on collision. But Ziffnix trades back and tries to take down a further player as he dives through the smoke. Existence gets away. 22 HP left on that player, leaving just the big-brained IGL. The problem is, Harry, the bomb. Yeah, bomb's down behind car. This is not an easy spot to reclaim it from. He checks that CT's clear. And the timing gets the better of him. Smith's going to find him from long. And they now reach nine rounds, which I'm not mistaken was how many Cloud9 got against them in one of the maps they played there. I think that's the most of rounds that any team have managed to get versus the Danes thus far at this event. So they are at least one away from breaking the current record, but the fact that no one's even taken a map off of Astralis yet is crazy enough. They got 12 rounds. And one round. Okay, so it's 12. So never mind, G2 still yeah. have a way to go. It's just going to be the eco for Astralis into this one. Dupree has a smoke along with Glaives. So they can look to try and make something happen. Two smokes might be uh, reminiscent of a mid to B, perhaps, or you could use that to uh, execute in towards the A bomb site. Smoking short, smoke down and connect there, but that won't work if body picks you limb from limb. Oh, caught on the jump escape, but Kenny S trying to catch mid players. Maybe overwhelmed. Here's a lot of T's with pistols, and he's going to be dangerous up close, but Existence bails him out. Two shots, and that means there's no pressure, so Body can run in as well, and he'll find that final kill to seal the deal. Double digits for G2. And I think it, a lot of this is the case of it's like Astralis are the best CT side team in the world. You could be a great T side like G2. I'm sure this team uh, in time will be a really, really good T sided team. But Astralis is so good at the CT side, hence that first half score. Now that we've actually switched things over, not that Astralis can't play T side, but G2 starting to level out with them a little bit more, starting to play a lot better. And they have done a good job of pulling this game back, but still with Astralis bordering map point. There's always that one worry that they could just clinch around and put G2 in the dirt. So, tactical pause there for Astralis for a mere moment. Making sure they're all on the same page before we jump back into this one. The AWP, one per team. That's two in map, but you see a lot of double orping as well, but we're not seeing any so far in this half. There was obviously Astralis' double CT orp that they ran on Device and Dupree, but since then it has been... Just one for one. And fast towards long. Zipnix looks to burst out, but oh, he gets tagged with the orb. Down to 15 points of health, and the spray comes through, but it's too late because the kill has been found from Astralis. The man advantage taken from Magisk. And even though Zipnix is low, they're going to be pretty happy with that one. Yeah, 
I mean, what a man to find as well. Body hitting the deck early on. Glaive down in the pit, gonna try and take the fight with Kenny, and he's able to find it. Kenny. Just disposed of like he's nothing, and now. Astralis with a convincing two man lead. Only a bit of damage done to Zipnix. Three smokes left. They can use one of those on the cross. Shocks in existence. Could try boosting up into the bomb site. That's what they're going to assemble now. They quickly send Shocks on over. Dupree does check it, but he's going to fall. In the meantime, Device on this flank. Oh, that's devastating. Through the smoke. It looked like maybe something would have been possible until that shot comes in. And while Existence manages one, he knows better than most that this round is all said and done. He has to back away and look to try and seek refuge inside of the B-bomb site and its temporary safe walls. Desperate to hold on to the, AK, uh, to the M4, rather. If he does, buying up in the next round, G2 is going to have a pretty healthy buy, all things considered. But it's still going to be map point. Oh, Existence, don't you dare go back. Oh. Didn't listen. Yeah, and Astralis were never going to hunt that kill as well. Not heavily. They weren't going to push into B because not only do they not have money, but also two of the three players were 10 HP. The Jisk and Zipnix. So Astralis were just holding. Existence obviously wa wasn't to know all the details. Doesn't have them like us. But yeah, that, that peak was never going to work out. He was hoping to get some information and instead he got a bullet to the chest. Certainly a remedy to success. Astralis, 15 rounds. Just enough to buy here for G2 as they try and piece this together, as you say. Not with that saved gun, but they will have the money on these last two players to buy up. An MP7 on Smiths, a Famas on Kenny. Buying this AWP has really put his money in the dirt, so we're going to have a bit of a problem when it comes down to economy for G2. And as you can see, this is Astralis' best chance of closing out the game so far. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, looking very, very good for them. Are you going to rely on a big hero play to come through from someone on G10? Now, mainly didn't help early on. They lost body and Kenny S so fast in that previous yeah. round. So this time, no one tagged on that cross either. That's definitely going to help things out. The bomb had a decent spawn for B. That's on the back of Dupree. And he's heading over there. What does he see right now? Just playing it safe, playing it passive, not peeking into anything. Only existence resides there. Everyone else trapped down in CT. And the difference we're noticing here with the CT side at G2 is, is they're very individual. They're very reliant on their own skill, right? Astralis on long, for example, so much team play. Two, three players there constantly. Same on the B site. Always grouped up, always effectively trading, setting each other up for success with utility, flashbang smokes. G2, a team of aim stars, all relying on their own ability to win their battles. Yeah, they've uh, got to boost some shocks. Device with the flick and Clay have going to burn him out. What a wombo combo that is. Assuredly, shocks do not have happy feet. Oh, they were on fire. I don't mind again for Astralis. This is looking so good for them now to win this map here and go 1 0 in this series, meaning they'll be one map away from securing a spot in the semi finals in the Lanxes Arena. So it's going to drop down a CT. They hear these footsteps coming in. There's still two players inside of this A bomb site. One of those being Body, one being Kenny. This flank down from Long by Glaive and Dupree has to land. Oh. Body's claimed back three big kills from down in CT. Smith's going to manage one more. Now it's Existence versus Dupree. The top fragger for Astralis versus the brains behind G2. Dupree tries to take the fight. Bomb goes down now. He has a Molotov for the post plot. He can delay this retake as well, coming in from short. And this buys him time. But he wants to take the fight. He wants to walk around. Existence keeping an eye on it. He's going to find the frag. G2, they're going to live to fight another day. An AK retrieve. The defuse comes in. And that will be an 11th round for G2. And while Dupree had the height there to look down to existence, which can typically win you a fight, the way the Molotovs bloom is that if you're closer to a Molotov, you can see through it better than someone far away. Those flames, uh, well, more the smoke, uh, render better if you're closer. So if anything, despite being lower down, existence had an advantage in that fight anyway, and he does take advantage of it. So a good clutch from the cooler of G2 has kept them in this game for at least another round as Astralis scrambled together their money. What do we have here? An AK or two, an AWP. 
and uh, Deagle on Zipnix with a CZ on Glaive. So not the best of buys, but the thing is with Astralis is they can win any round. So let's not count them out here or now. Oh. Device caught looking the wrong way. That's the AWP gone. What a scalp to find my shocks down in mid. Still, Glaive was able to retrieve it, run forward. Now he's got the AWP in hand. They're just going to juggle this around. That's one thing I love about Astralis. They're always so close together. I mean, in a situation like this, three rifles, they can pass them back and forth. Body, oh, the timing. No. Luckily enough, he might just get away, and he does. He is going to be sweating bullets now. <laughs> Moving away from the long position, tack down a 2 HP. But no bodies hitting the floor just yet. Although, just as I say, Shoxy. Can he get dealt with this? His flank down through lower tunnels by Smith's in existence. Ballsy to say the very least. But Astralis, their spidey senses are tingling. They've backed away. They've all turned their attention over here towards Long. They're going to try and take the fight with Kenny and Body, but they're being wrapped onto through lower tunnels here. And Astralis have no idea what about what is about to hit them. Kenny, yes, is one of those things. He shuts down the long player, the players, before getting traded. And now we do have that bomb stuck in middle on its own. But Dupree drops body. He was tagged up earlier on. Existence find the bomb. 25 seconds left. Existence can just run away because the chances are Dupree does not have time to get that stick in. He doesn't even need to take the fight. 15 seconds up. Dupree's got a run and gun to try and find this last player, but he has no idea where Existence sits. And there it is. Two rounds in a row. Existence bests Dupree. I mean, we spoke about Smith's being the simple counter. Existence is apparently the Dupree yeah. counter. And bear in mind, this is Dupree, who it's not like he's not doing well. He's 27 yeah. and 14. He's almost dropped 30 kills in this series. Now it's 12 to 15. G2. One round away from being the team thus far that's given Astralis the biggest run for their money. And I imagine that will come through. Look at the money here for Astralis. They have nothing. $2,000, it's the eco. They wait for that loss bonus to kick in because it's only going to be third round after this. So 2400 means they need to keep at least $2,000. So we really can't have any investment here. No AWP. That's another factor. Unless we have a bomb plant or some kills come through for Astralis. But again, without investment, you can't expect a bomb plant or, or any kills. These Glocks are pretty useless. I uh. mean, even then, you wouldn't you wouldn't have head armor with the AWP behind you. So they do invest a fair bit. To be fair, like Dupree's on a Deagle with armor. He's got a thousand dollars left up. That's not a lot of money. Yeah, they've gone for a partial. They're gonna buy up. You imagine the round after this, but that 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 could see G2 reach what a 14, 15 scoreline before there's a full buy-in for Astralis. Yeah, I I, I, I want to see. Yeah, I want to see what they're gonna do with this because uh, unless they have like a really good idea to get a bomb plant, which I imagine with this utility they do. <sighs> but that might put a stop to it. Kenny with the AWP. Drops Dupree's deadly deeg down in mid. Body gonna even find one more. The nade reigns in. Magisk. Well, he does. Oh. Kenny. Through the doors once again. Stay out of mid while Kenny S is there, that's for sure. Glaive left in a 1v4 down in the lower tunnel. You don't imagine his odds are very high. Smith <laughs> finds them both. G2 are turning this around. 13 to 15. And oh my goodness, there's no money left for Astralis in this round, as we say. See, to me, that looked like Astralis wanted to set up and go for a bomb plant play because G2 haven't been running any aggression on the CT side, really. They haven't pushed too much past the you know normal like uh, CT positions. They haven't taken long. They haven't pushed up mid or B. So Astralis were hoping to go for an execute with smokes and get a bomb plant, allowing them to buy up here. But as a result, they, they don't win it because G2 just suffocate them. Smiths chases tunnels and kills two players. And now Astralis, as you say, another pistol buy before that final round of regulation. This has all gone tits up for Astralis and they need to turn it around, but Kenny's not going to let them. He's warmed up and he's here on the DM servers with three kills on short. Glaive last player up. This round is done. We're looking to the future. We're looking to that rifle round that Astralis can show, but Harry, overtime on the horizon. Yeah. Here. This is absolutely unreal. G2, one round away from potentially taking Astralis through to overtime. What a comeback this has been. If we could bring up the scoreboard quickly. Wow. I mean, yeah, you can just see the difference. It was a, a an 11-4 half in favor of Astralis. Since then, everything has gone the way of G2, it feels like. All out for device, but doesn't spot anything on the cross down in mid. Smith's going to be... 
bringing out a secondary AWP alongside Kenny here for G2. And that's something so good about this G2 roster. Look at the amount of AWPing power you have. You have Smiths, you have Kenny, you have Shocks. Of course, replicated to some extent by a lot of teams, but these are some world-class AWPers. So can G2 do what some would say is improbable, maybe even impossible? So many teams have tried and failed to even oh. find 15 rounds against Astralis. At this event, no one's even had a best 12. G2 now one round away from taking this through to overtime on their map pick. And for many teams, for many people out there, this is the first time in a long time that Astralis have, have looked vulnerable. Mortal even. I mean, up until now, they've looked undefeatable. So the remaining four players are going to try and run the gauntlet versus Kenny S. Once considered one of the best AWPers, if not the best AWPer in the world. He's about to be tested as they come his way. They've dropped down into CT and he's fallen off the angle, given up the bomb site. The bomb will go down here for Astralis. Ooh. So many players trapped down in CT, but they quickly boost two back up on a short. I like that from them. They don't take the fight versus Kenny. Instead, they leave that down to Device to try and tangle with the beast that is Kenny S down at long. He's going to go in with the peak. Device looks like he was going to win that, but Kenny's done it. Now it's Zipnix and Glaive. Two versus five. The world on their shoulders. Everyone coming their way. Everyone watching in anticipation. It's Zipnix and a 1v5. It's just not happening. And G2, they're going to go to take Astralis through to overtime here on Dust2. What a game this has been. If you're just joining us, where have you been? <laughs> It's, it was a 4-11 half in favor of Astralis. Since moving on to the CT side, all the necessary pieces of the puzzle have been there. Kenny S has stepped up tremendously, and we've seen the supporting cast fall into place around him. Shocks, Body, Smiths, all of them fragging right now. Existence has had so many key 1v1 rounds as well. And well, we now enter overtime 16k MR3. We said if G2 wanted to win this series, they had to win it out here on Dust. And now that opportunity presents itself to them. Certainly not what we expected here on this matchup, Harry. The double orbit back in again for both teams. We've got Astralis running in on the T side. It's so doable with MR3 16K. You've got the money for it. Why not give it a go? And Dupree certainly will. Existence dead down in that B site. Astralis have yet to push this site properly on the T side too much. And now they're going to find out why they shouldn't. Smiths is there. Fires back with his own sniper, and that will send Astralis packing. They're going on a camping trip somewhere else, and it won't be on that B bomb site for now because G2 have rotated a second man into position. That's going to be Shoxy here to help out Smiths. It does give a lot of mid control the way of Astralis, but with this double up still intact for G2, they've got the sight lines there, at least from the likes of Kenny S. Shocks. Now giving up B, moving back to middle. Dupree's there, but he won't be able to hit the shot. Instead, just smoking it off and using that as an escape route to get up short. They want to split this A site, and Body has an off angle to try and catch the player, but the flashback peeks him out, and he can take Glaive here and now, but he misses the shot. Astralis pulling it back for the man advantage, and the rotation's already in. They've given up B. They know exactly what's coming, but can they follow up? Well, here's the man who's been oh. performing for them, Kenny! Over at the car, he's propelled them back into the driving seat here versus Astralis, and he's just the gift that keeps on giving for G2. 16 to 15. Kenny is absolutely incredible. Oh my word. You wonder what it takes for G2 to step back up and start to challenge the Danes, and it's Kenny firing on all cylinders there. And think about how slow Kenny and Shocks were in that first half, right? When they got the four rounds, we didn't see a, l a breath of life from either of these two players. They were the bottom performers for the team. It was Smiths in existence all across this board. And now the two top performers, Harry, Kenny and Shocks. They're saving the day here for G2. The legends being legendary. And it's Smiths to open up this round once again. Majisk fast out long here looking for the contact play. But there's so much utility. And Smiths in the meantime has found his second kill. This man is on an absolute tear with the AWP. Locking down middle and dropping the bomb. But Majisk is still here. The problem is he's alone. Caddy's going to pluck him from the server at Zipnix. 1v4. And while he does manage Smiths, he still has so much left to do. Existence now keeping an eye on the short play. This isn't impossible. Zitnik's very level head in these sorts of clutch scenarios, but keep oh. your eye on body. Zitnik has read this so well. The brain on this man. Well, timing get the better of him as it so often does. No, nope. body going to go down. Now a 1v2. G2 do not want to risk throwing this away. 
Kenny. He's been an absolute monster for them to try and contend with. It makes this ball ahead, and oh my goodness, now 1v1. Some individual brilliance to try and propel Astralis back to an even scoreline here versus G2. Existence won every single clutch that G2 have put him into. Now he has to try and keep that going. 1v1 versus Zip next. A bomb planted for long. Existence. The brains behind G2. Pushing on in. He knows where it's planted for. Zipnix peeks out, does the damage. Now both players one shot away from going down. Existence taps the bomb. The peek comes out. He's sticking it. Zipnix doesn't believe it. Goes in with the <gasps> peek. Oh, no. A couple of missed shots, but he finally gets the job done. And Astralis, they're going to lock themselves in a 16th. As he stays true to them in the 1v4. All four kills. You can never count this man out. You can never count this team out. Astralis showing the star power they have on this roster. But still G2 going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a new team. Ridiculous scenes here in Cologne. And the auto snipers are out, Harry. They're trying to lock down middle on the cross. There's no way the G2 will be able to safely make their way, surely. I mean, that's impressive. No damage done with all those wall bangs. G2 somehow get two players into that B site. But Shox is aggressive on short. He's been boosted up early on, going for a quick push. We do have two players here, but neither of them orped up. So I imagine we won't see that corner boost that is so common to spot lower. And even though G2 don't go for it, Astralis predict it. The Molotov holds them back for any short aggression. Dupree sets that one up. And a flash into middle allows him to clear out some portion of the map. Gain a little more control here for Astralis and information. They say knowledge is power, but Astralis are going to need more than that. Body is close. The push round is perfect. Dupree taking that frag with the Molotov down on stairs. That was a position it didn't even need to worry about. There was only one spot he could have been in. And now Shox is going to get in their face, but Dupree takes it off. Well, now it falls to Kenny inside of the A-bomb site. If they keep heading this way, existence has started to pull around. And Kenny's going to go for the aggression. Shox, he tried but failed. Now Kenny stands in his place. Big boots to fill, but Kenny's look good. Oh, oh he didn't no. spot the little toes of Dupree, and he snuck by. Dupree spots him. Kenny falls, and with that, one of the biggest titans on this team goes down. Existence from CT falls. Dupree is on a tear. Four kills and Smiths left in a 1v5, doing all he can, and it's not enough. Astralis 17 to 16. They win out the first half of overtime here on Dust 2. G2 left, limping, looking wounded, need to go flawless now on their T side. A side in which, while they need three rounds now, they only managed four in the entire first half of this game. And what a game Astralis are having. Dupree specifically, 32 kills. The autos are out for round one of OT. Can't say that's too common. And Astralis certainly wouldn't expect him. It just gets tagged on the cross. But was that really worth $6,000? You tell me. Shocks trying to work his way on long as well. The flash is out and his force back off the angle. Allows Zipnix to gain a little more control as well. He's pushed up on the corner of long. Glaive's still here for support. Both moral and physical. And they turn, it takes deep, long control, and G2 have just given up that portion of the map. They want nothing to do with it. Still, this double orb held strong on G2. But with two players, the two best players on this team, tagged down so low, this could seriously hold them back. The flash over mid might pop them through, but the Vice still hits a shot. And they've even got the you know, fallback factor of Dupree being here as well. Yeah, Dupree, he's just a fail-safe, the linchpin. If everything goes wrong, if the Vice falls, you still can rely on Dupree to find something even then. He's got his ears pressed to the ground, and he can hear the stampede up on short. Dupree still holding close. And there you're going to find a little bit of chip damage down on a body. Their utility usage as ever on point. Body now brought down to the realm of a one-shot headshot with these M4s. Zipnix hiding in that smoke. It's going to start to fade now. He's dropped down a CT, but there's three players inside of A for Astralis. It's going to be... Uh, Almost even odds as they look to head through. There's only 20 seconds left. This play has to be fast. It has to be flawless. It has to be French as ever. Push comes in and Device first shot. It's the target body. Gonna go down. They try and trade, but there's so many players here. Glaive and Dupree 
mop up the stragglers. Astralis going to move on to an 18th round. G2 lagging behind now. They need two to force a second overtime here. Astralis, a team that has yet to drop a map at this event. They've looked utterly invincible, and G2, albeit for a brief moment, made them look mortal. This is David v. Goliath. Only in this story, Goliath might very well win. A shot from Kenny down mid means that both players managed to get across. Doesn't quite catch the timing. Zipnix and Device going to be watching long. Astralis here, the aggression down long is given up because right now G2 are charging, stampeding up short. This triple A setup may be good, but they may need another man, Dupree. Does he want to flank that back line? Not for now, because G2 are far from committed to this site. Astralis just needing this one final round. Looking to make it quick and concise. G2 waiting. And Glaive, he's going to be the one to try and force these gunfights for the side of Astralis. Although, gives up pretty early on, gets spotted in the smoke and just drops off. He wants nothing to do with it. Kenny instead just waits in case he is on the corner. But Astralis probably not going to re-aggress too much after that initial bout. As G2 have now successfully burned down almost every bit of utility that Astralis hold on to. A nade or two, a flashbang, a smoke just deployed. But G2, they all know too well about pushing last second into sight. However, this time it might not work. They're all tagged down. Glaive is on the other side, and G2 are going for it. They're going to get barreling through. Glaive hidden in this smoke. He's the failsafe. The linchpin time's ticking down. They've actually opted to head in through mid. He hops down into CT, and while existence manages one, that's the round. Astralis managed to win it out 19 to 16 in overtime. G2 give them a run for their money. But ultimately, everything comes up day in there in map number one. They're going to go one no up in this series that decides yeah. who secures that semi-final spot. That was a really fun game, though. I mean, like, fair play to G2. They're not able to get the victory. But again, coming into this uh, this, yeah. this event, I don't think people were expecting this much of them anyway. They're I tell taking you what, Astralis to overtime. Existence looking like he might do really good on that promise of, yeah, you want to be our peak in two years. I mean, it's looking like, you know, it's been a few weeks two since weeks, he gave yeah. that interview. <laughs> and they're, they're doing fantastic. And if they can keep this up, upward trajectory, maybe not this event, but I mean, future events, I think they could be one of the teams to bring the heat to a team like Astralis. You say maybe not this event, but they're already guaranteed no, in the court. To finals. Yeah, there's still yeah, a chance, there's still a chance they, they the can. Semis. I mean, like, I'm not counting G2 out at oh, all no, right now. Oh, no, by no means. I'm just saying, if yeah, Existence yeah. can make good on his promise, imagine how good they'll be in the future, exactly. right? Even if they fall out in the series 2-0 to zero, with Nuke now coming up next, Astralis' pick, which I kind of expect. You know, I, I, I still think G2 are definitely in this game. I, I'm just going to wait and see before I make any like, crazy assumptions, because I did not think that oh, game yeah. was going to go to OT. No, assuming, G2 are looking just so good. Assuming they lose this game, right? Like, they go into the quarters, it's going to completely depend on their matchup. They could play versus Na'Vi, a team they've already beaten in the group stages as well. 16-14, it'll be a, a very close game, but they took the victory there on their opening match. So, yeah, there's, there's a lot on the line here for G2. I, there's a lot of opportunity here. I mean, I tell you what, it almost feels like, you know, all the Danes, sure, they want Astralis win, but it's like the rest of the world watching, they kind of want to see Astralis look vulnerable, right? You don't just want this team tearing it up at the top. There's, I think there's a lot of support right now for G2 as well. I mean, especially yeah. considering how well they did. But... As exciting as map one was, it can only get better. We'll be back with a second map over on Nuke after the break.
Cell One Cologne. Did I seriously get that dude in smoke?